Hello, I'm Jeff of Japan Japan and I'm excited today to share with you the top 20 things you need to know before traveling to Japan in 2024. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or planning your first trip to this incredible country, these tips will help you navigate Japan with ease. Now, without further ado, let's start with the first. Number one. Geisha district fights back against over tourism. In response to complaints about misbehaving tourists, Kyoto's renowned Geisha district Gion is taking measures to combat over tourism by closing off some private property alleys. Now, tourists often crowd the narrow streets following tour guides for extended periods, prompting local officials to install keep out signs in April. These signs, warning pedestrians in both Japanese and English, indicate a fine of 10,000 yen for trespassing. Now, despite by covering only a few blocks, the move reflects growing resentment toward over tourism, even as Japan's economy increasingly relies on tourism revenue. Gion, known for its beautiful tea houses and geisha performances, and of course, historical charm, but the residents here are wary of turning into a mere theme park due to the excessive tourism pressure, especially as overseas visitor numbers rebound to pre-pandemic levels. Number two, the late bloom. Now this is the time that it's okay to be late in Japan because full bloom of cherry blossoms is coming late. The Japan Meteorological Agency reported the blooming of the Somei Yoshino cherry trees in central Tokyo on March 29th, marking the latest bloom in the past decade. A staff member visually confirmed blossoms on a sample tree at Yasukuni Shrine in Chiyoda Ward. Despite recent trends of earlier blooming attributed to global warming, this year's bloom was notably delayed, occurring 15 days later than the previous year and 5 days later than average. That the latest bloom in Tokyo in recent history was observed on April 11, 1984. Actually, every day I go out and see how the cherry blossoms are doing. However, yes, it's a bit late this time. And usually there are years that we have a full bloom at the end of March. But right now, it's I'm shooting this one March 31st. And so I don't see the full bloom yet. However, I see some of them blooming already. But it's not a full-blown, one-road blooming of cherry blossoms. Let's go with the third one. You need to be careful with STSS. I hope this is not the same with the COVID or the corona. However, it is a bacterial infection disease. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government has issued a warning as cases of STSS or Streptococcal Toxic Shock Syndrome, I don't know if I pronounced it correct, a rare yet severe bacterial infection. The cases have surpassed last year's count with 88 cases in the capital and 517 nationwide. STSS, often termed the flesh eating disease, has prompted North Korea to cancel a soccer match with Japan due to concerns over its spread. The infection, primarily caused by Group A Streptococcus bacteria, can lead to tissue necrosis and has a mortality rate of around 30%. Now, health authorities urge prompt medical attention for symptoms such as limb pain and swelling. So you need to be careful if you're traveling to Japan. Same with Corona or the COVID-19, basic preventive measures like hand washing and wound care are emphasized. The recent rise in cases is attributed to the highly transmissible M1 UK strain. Now, while individuals over 40 traditionally account for most cases, a surge in infections among those in their 40s was observed in 2023. Now, North Korea's decision to cancel the match and South Korea's caution to travelers reflect regional concerns over the outbreak. Next, embark on an adventure at Immersive Fort Tokyo. It is a new theme park in Tokyo's Odaiba area and it offers visitors a innovative entertainment experience with 12 attractions designed to immerse them fully. Highlights include spy action where guests are part of a mafia spy gunfight scenario and Sherlock, yeah, you know Sherlock, a live performance allowing visitors to interact freely on stage with actors. Now, other attractions feature cabaret style shows and anime collaborations. Operated by Katana, tickets start at 6,800 for adults and 3,000 for children, with additional fees for certain attractions. That's in Japanese yen, okay? Katana is also planning a theme park in Okinawa, aims to revolutionize live entertainment, leveraging the success of its projects like Seibun Amusement Park and Hoist Ten Bosch. Did I pronounce it correctly? Hope so. Now Ghibli Park or Ghibli Park unveils new Valley of Witches. 
it just opened this March. Now it is in Nagakute Aichi Ken and it's set to open in the new Valley which is it is already open. It started March 16 and completed the theme park dedicated to beloved Studio Ghibli films. Now this area will showcase iconic settings for movies like Kiki's Delivery Service and House Moving Castle, including the Okino Residence and the Gucho Kipanya Bakery. Visitors can explore the majestic house castle, enjoy attractions like a themed carousel and a flying machine ride. Tickets ranging from 7,300 yen to 7,800 for adults and 3,750 to 3,900 for children. It offers access to all five areas and various buildings. Additionally, low-speed electric vehicles resembling the cat bus from my neighbor Totoro will operate within the park, providing a unique experience through Expo 2005 Aichi Commemorative Park with tickets priced at 1,000 yen uh, for adults and 500 yen for children. Tourists can immerse themselves in the enchanting world of Studio Ghibli. Next is the Team Lab and it has a new home this year. Experience the extraordinary at the Team Lab at its new home in Asabuda Hills in Tokyo. The immersive art installation invites you to transcend boundaries and immerse yourself in a world of dazzling digital artworks. Now with over 50 captivating installations including new additions, guests embark on a mesmerizing journey through interconnected spaces. Seamlessly blending art and technology and don't miss your chance to be part of the unparalleled sensory adventure and of course don't forget to book your tickets in advance as reservations are filling up fast let's go to the next one you need to discover the magic of tokyo's disney seas fantasy springs i need to call all disney fans Tokyo Disney Sea is set to unveil its Fantasy Springs expansion, featuring themed areas inspired by beloved Disney movies. Now, with new attractions, themed restaurants, and immersive experiences, Fantasy Springs promises to enchant visitors of all ages. Next is the Donkey Kong Country at Universal Studio Japan, or USJ. Need to prepare for an epic adventure at USJ's Donkey Kong Country expansion. Step into the world of this iconic video game franchise and embark on a jungle themed roller coaster ride like no other. With interactive elements and family friendly attractions, it's sure to be a hit with visitors. Moving on, we have the projection mapping show at Tokyo Government Building. It's actually the world's biggest. Travelers to Tokyo can now experience the world's largest projection mapping show for free at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government's headquarters building. Um, it's titled Tokyo Night in Light. The nightly shows cover approximately 14,000 square meters on the building's eastern facade, making it a must-see attraction for tourists and locals alike. Tokyo Governor Yoriko Koike hopes it becomes a new landmark spot while attendees praise the incredible art enjoyed by both children and adults. With shows scheduled until April, visitors can witness different displays on weekends and holidays, all powered mainly by solar energy. And then we have a Tokyo building from Meiji era to reopen as a manga attraction. Travelers visiting Tokyo starting March will have an opportunity to explore a unique attraction housed in a Meiji-era Western-style building in Sitagaya Ward. Once in the break of demolition, the former residence of Theodora Ozaki has been preserved and transformed into a manga showcase thanks to the efforts by manga artists like Kazumi Yamashita and Rubiko Takahashi. The visitors can expect to find original manga copies, illustrations exhibited in a gallery alongside a cafe and a shop. Renowned manga artist Tetsuya Chiba praises the initiative as a significant step in promoting Japanese manga culture. With prices yet to be announced, uh, this attraction promises to offer tourists like you and locals alike a glimpse into Japan's rich manga heritage. On to the next, Mount Fuji. It's actually battling over tourism. Tourists planning to climb Mount Fuji should be aware of new trail access restrictions in both Shizuoka and Yamanashi prefectures. This move is aiming to manage overcrowding and enhance safety. Uh, travelers should check regulations beforehand and book mountain lodge accommodations early as evening trail access may be limited. Now, additionally, climbers from Yamanashi side will face a 2,000 
yen entry fee starting from July 1 with an additional 1,000 voluntary contribution for mountain conservation uh, totaling 3,000 yen per person. Now entry restrictions and fees are implemented to maintain safety and preserve Mount Fuji's iconic landscape. Uh, emphasizing the importance of planning ahead and following guidelines for a safe climbing experience. Miyajima's Trace Tax Miyajima Island, home to the iconic Itsukushima Shrine, confronts over tourism with a unique approach a tourist tax. Now, it implemented to sustain the island's cultural heritage. The tax encourages uh, visitors to become stewards of Miyajima's beauty for future generations. Now, you'll be hearing a lot of like raising of taxes or raising of fees. However, this is for the benefit of both parties. Next, uh, we need to reevaluate the JR Pass. Of course, a lot of you know the JR Pass, but once a traveler staple faces scrutiny due to a significant price hike. Uh, with the rise in costs, travelers are urged to reconsider its value. So, exploring alternative transportation options and regional passes for a cost effective journey. I will just do a full video about JR Pass in the future. Next, number 14, embracing rural Japan. Now, amidst over tourism in major cities, rural Japan beckons with untouched beauty and authentic experiences. You need to discover lesser known destinations where nature's whispers and offering a reprieve from the tourist crowds. And one example is going to Bananosato and Guzaisho, where you can both experience snow and spring on the same day. So, yeah, why not try Nagoya? Not, it's not only Tokyo and Osaka. The next one would be overcrowding at Kyoto and you'll have like a bus service. I even remember my colleague uh, when I asked about like some tips if I would go to Tokyo, sorry not Tokyo but Kyoto, or it was, she was actually discouraging me to go there because of the overcrowding. There are a lot of people and with a baby and my, with my family, it might be difficult to go there and it might be difficult to enjoy Kyoto where there are a lot of people and it's actually a small area but with a lot of people like with or without tourists. Anyway, uh, Kyoto is really nice. It's one of the favorites of a lot of people. Kyoto is combating overcrowding due to a surge in post-COVID tourism by considering the launch of Tourist Express bus service. So this initiative aims to alleviate pressure on city buses and local residents by providing direct routes from Kyoto Station to popular attractions like Kiyomizu Temple and the Gion Geisha District. Set to debut in June, the Sightseeing Express bus will offer fewer stops and slightly higher fares. Regular city buses with tickets priced at 500 yen for adults and 250 yen for children. Next one is Hokkaido's Misako. Hokkaido's Nisiko Mountain Resort is implementing a new lodging tax. Again, there's another tax. With visitors facing charges up to 2,000 yen per night on hotel and private lodging stays. Now approved by Japan's Internal Affairs Minister, Takeaki Matsumoto, the tax will commence in November and is projected to generate 162 million yen annually for local government initiatives, particularly focused on enhancing transportation and tourism infrastructure. The tax structure ranges from 100 yen to 2,000 yen per night, and it's based on the nightly room charge, with exemptions for school-related trips. Originally, considering a fixed tax rate, and Niseko opted for this like leveled approach to elevate administrative burdens on operators. Aligning with similar taxes implemented in Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka prefectures and other municipalities. Number 17, Tokyo installs clear translation screen in subways. Now this is like really, really nice. In preparation for upcoming global sporting events in Tokyo next year, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government has installed transparent translation screens in subway stations. Developed by Topan Holdings Incorporated, the system covers 12 languages including English, Chinese, Spanish, and others. Now positions as a trial and Tochomai station in Shinjuku ward, the screens allow for facial expressions to be seen while reading subtitles, facilitating communication. Now these screens which were previously installed at Seibo Shinjuku station and tourist information counters aim to assist foreign visitors and individuals with hearing or speech impairments. With plans to expand to other stations including those hosting World Athletics, Championships and Summer Deaf Olympics next year, the screen signify efforts to enhance accessibility and communication for diverse visitors in Tokyo. Number 18. 
Now, you need to be prepared for earthquakes during your visit to Japan, as an uh, earthquake prone country can happen unexpectedly. Stay informed about safety procedures and evacuation centers, and please download the NHK World Japan app for real time updates. Remember, safety comes first. Let's go with 19. Before I say the last two updates, or last two bullets, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you are getting value from this video. Thanks. Night tours. As part of Japan's efforts to cater to the influx of visitors, factory viewing night tours have emerged as a unique activity, offering participants a glimpse into countries, modern economy, and industrial history. Cities like Kawasaki near Tokyo, allowing visitors to witness uh, dystopian-like scenes and gain insights into the operations and significance of various facilities. Well, these tours offer a captivating blend of education and exploration, offering a new perspective on Japan's industrial landscape under the cover of night. You might be busy, but yeah, this is one thing of also enjoying your trip to Japan. Last but not least, Osaka Prefecture is contemplating the introduction of a fixed fee for inbound tourists, potentially coinciding with the commencement of the World Exposition in Western Japan in April 2025, as revealed by its governor. Now, this fee aims to finance initiatives addressing over-tourism, marking a departure from Japan's absence of specific taxation schemes targeting foreigners. While the details Details of this proposed systems are pending approval from the Internal Affairs Minister. Hurdles such as aligning with tax conventions uh, must be addressed. Now, Osaka Governor Hirofumi Yoshimura emphasizes the importance of fostering harmony between tourists and locals. Now, with plans to establish a panel for further discussion in April, the invasion fee is likened to the existing accommodation tax ranging from 100 to 300 yen, so not much. That's per night, now respective of uh, nationality. This initiative arises in anticipation of 2030 opening of an integrated resort, including casinos and Yomishima Island, the site of 2025 Expo. Uh, we actually needed measures to manage tourist influx and over tourism. Now there you have it. I know the changes are more of like the tax or the fee uh, that Japan is raising to try to combat over tourism. However, just understand that tourism is actually a double-edged sword. Anyway, it's not much. However, you can choose. Hopefully this video could help you in trying to map out all your itineraries where you would go. And if you're a budget traveler, try to go to places that are free and has less sex. Now there you have it. Uh, those are the top 20 new things or updates that you need to know for traveling to Japan in 2024. I hope these tips help you make the most of your trip and navigate Japan with confidence. Now if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow travelers. And as always, stay tuned for more travel tips and updates from me. Until next time, matane, goodbye.